A hundred years ago, the names J.P. Morgan, Carnegie, Rockefeller, and James J. Hill were all synonymous with success. Having left Canada in 1856, Hill arrived in St. Paul at the age of 17 to seek his fortune. For the next 20 years, he successfully worked in various aspects of the shipping industry on the Mississippi. In partnership with four others, Hill purchased a bankrupt railway and formed the St. Paul, Minneapolis and Manitoba Railway Company, which later became the Great Northern Railway. Ten years after Hill arrived in St. Paul, he married waitress Mary Mahegan. They had ten children, and it was apparent he was devoted to Mary and loved his family very much. Although few other details remain regarding his personal life, his letters and papers indicate that in business, Hill was direct, blunt, stern, forceful, and fully expected his employees to work as hard as he did. By all accounts, he was a workaholic. One of the interesting stories about James J. is that he never took a salary out of the Great Northern Railroad. So he had to look elsewhere to get spending money. How he did that would be, as he was building the railroad, he and his contractors would partner and build towns, whole towns, like company towns. And they would run them for a couple of years until they became kind of a local distribution hub that would feed the railroad and then they would sell the general store, they would sell the livery, they would sell the blacksmith shop, they'd sell the hotel. And that's how they made uh, their spending money and built communities clear across the Northwest. The Empire Builder completed his greatest endeavor in 1893. His was the only transcontinental railway built without government money or land grants and the only railway not to go bankrupt during the 1890s depression. The Hill Railway lines developed into the Northern Securities Company, which was then the second largest company in America. Now, it's a shame to, to um, have James A. Hill categorized with a lot of robber barons from the turn of the century, and he's called a robber baron by people who don't know uh, that he made his money the old-fashioned way, <laughs> he worked for it, <clears throat> but he worked very hard and uh, did not cheat people and did not lie and did not steal. And that's a, a tradition I think that's really a, a good one to try to maintain. James J. Hill's philanthropy was far-reaching from the very early 1880s when he was, had become a wealthy man, uh, gave generously and widely to uh, churches, uh, of various denominations, uh, uh, educational institutions, uh, the New York Indigent Journalist Fund, uh, built the St. Paul Seminary, uh, and of course he built this library in St. Paul, the James J. Hill Library, after his retirement from the railroad. Uh, building this modeled after uh, uh, J.P. Morgan's library in Manhattan. Before the library was completed, business tycoon and philanthropist James J. Hill died at his mansion on Summit Avenue in 1916 at the age of 77. Due to his incredible will and determination to succeed, Hill amassed a tremendous fortune and is listed as the 37th richest individual in American history. Junior Achievement of the Upper Midwest is proud to induct James J. Hill into the Business Hall of Fame.